Welcome back to the Ten Life Science. Uh, so this is a question paper of September. So uh, in terms of instructions, uh, on the first part, uh, we are able to answer all the questions so that we are, we are supposed to answer every question that we have in the question paper. Very important to take note of that instruction. Then I'm uh, going to our first part of our question, which is the multiple choice section. Our first question reads, which of the following describes an uh, endemic species? And of course, the correct response that we have uh, is D. Uh, that is uh, uh, plants and animals that are found only in a particular area and nowhere else in the world. So number two, which of the following organisms would, typ would typically be found in the savanna? So the correct response is B. Uh, we have got elephant, uh, zebras, giraffes, and leopards. So this is the correct answer that we have. So going to number three. Which of the following uh, processes takes place uh, during the carbon cycle? So you'd see that uh, uh, we have uh, burning of fossil, fossil fuels taking place. Uh, we've got also the decay. Uh, we also have uh, the decay of dead organisms by decomposers also taking place. Uh, we also have respiration of animals taking place. So we have got one, two, and three, uh, which is uh, correct. So we have A. So we go to uh, 1.2, whereby on 1.2, it reads, give the correct biological term for each of the following descriptions. Uh, so write only the term next to the question number. So the first one is saying plants that are adapted uh, to a dry climate. Uh, so I uh, would see that uh, these are called the, uh, the zero, uh, zero fights. So we have uh, zero fights as our response. This part, and then... Uh, we move on uh, to the second part, whereby it is a region characterized by a certain climate uh, and a particular type of vegetation. And uh, you see that on that part, it is the biome. Uh, we move on to the next part, whereby organisms without a true nucleus. Uh, on number three, uh, we put our response. Uh, going to the next one, uh, kingdom into which humans belong. Uh, we have the animalia is our response, and then uh, these are the correct uh, responses that we have on that part. Then we go to question two: take a below access feed the relationships in an ecosystem in a game reserve. So uh, the first question is which term is used to describe the feed relationship illustrated on the diagram below? So basically, this is the food web. Uh, so it is uh, the uh, the food web. So two point one point one. Uh, you'd see that it is the uh, food web as indicated. Then we go to the next one. Uh, what does the arrows on the diagram represent? So we've got the arrows that we are seeing there. So they represent uh, energy flow or shows which organism feeds on one another. So that's what we have. Then uh, on the next part, uh, identify the following on the above diagram. Uh, carnivore. Uh, so the carnivore are uh, obviously uh, an animal that feeds on one another animal. We have got uh, a hyena, we have got a lion uh, as part of that. So hyena and, uh, hyena and lion are part of uh, our carnivores. Then we've got a primary consumer, uh, the one that feeds on vegetation. We are talking about, we've got a, a rabbit, uh, we have got uh, impala, and also buffalo. So uh, that is what we have. And then we are saying, give a reason why the lions and hyenas would still survive even if all the impalas in this game we say who, uh, were to die out. Uh, so uh, they will feed on other animals, uh, on rabbits and buffalo. We have got rabbits here. So they will feed on rabbits and also they will feed on a buffalo. So that's uh, the case why they would survive. So 1.1.5, which organism in the ecosystem would be affected the most as a result of an outbreak of a disease that only kills rabbits? So uh, you see that uh, if uh, the disease only kills rabbits, uh, if you go back to our food web, uh, it, was, it, it shows that uh, the one that is going to be affected is the hawk. Uh, the hawk is the one that is going to be affected. And we go to the next question. Sentence, um, Give a reason for your answer to question 2.1.5 uh, because uh, it feeds only on, on rabbits. Uh, the hawk feeds only on uh, rabbits. So on, in terms of our response, we are saying um, 
on 2.6 are it feeds only on rabbits or no other food source of walk or this full weight. So that is uh, the response that we have on 2.6. And go to 2.7, explain how poaching or illegal killing of lions would affect the number of hyenas in this game reserve. How poaching, uh, obviously, uh, will uh, uh, poaching, which is illegal killing of lions, would affect the number of hyenas uh, in this uh, game. So obviously, you are seeing that uh, the number of hyenas will increase uh, due to uh, more food available uh, to them uh, because they are feeding all the same uh, food. So uh, if hyena, if uh, the uh, lions die, it means that the hyenas are the only ones that are left to eat that food. So they will increase. So all our response, we are saying that uh, the number of hyenas will increase uh, due to more food available to them or less competition for food from lions. So that is what we have on question two. So um. Let's go to our next question, 2.2.2. There are different ways uh, of classifying organisms. Uh, we have uh, different ways of classifying organisms. The, bi the binomial of two name system is used intentionally to identify organisms. For example, humans are called Homo sapiens. And then the scientists who came up with the uh, binomial system of classification of organisms. Well, was at the name of that scientist. So we are going to see that um, the name of the scientist uh, is <laughs> so uh, in terms of uh, the that part, uh, we uh, move on to see uh, the response uh, that we have. So uh, the name of uh, the scientist is Carolus Alinius. So this is our way for that part, 2.2.2. Uh, so in terms of our 2.2.2, uh, what do the following represent on the uh, taxonomic uh, name of humans? Uh, we have got Homo, okay. and uh, we have also uh, Sapien. So uh, in terms of Homo, it needs, uh, it needs a genus, and then we talk, if we talk of Sapien, it's a species. So that's uh, the response that we have. So we're saying, uh, this is what we have uh, uh, in terms of Homo and then uh, in terms of Sapien. So that is uh, what we have uh, on that part. Then we go to the next person that we have, 2.2.3. Set one criteria um, scientists use uh, to classify organisms. So uh, you'll see that they use uh, the uh, features or common characteristics. Uh, features or common uh, characteristics. So this is what we have on this part. And going to the next part, 2.2.4, uh, into which class would you classify organi uh, all organisms that have, far, uh, that have fair on their bodies and can maintain a constant internal body temperature? So uh, these are called mammals. They are called uh, mammals. So we have mammals as our response. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, on the next question, uh, which is now on question three, uh, it means an investigation was carried out to investigate the effect of alkaline pH on the growth of roots of young uh, Australian pine plants. The results are shown on table okay. below. Then, first question: List two planning steps that were taken during the investigation. What were the uh, planning steps are taken? So you see that in terms of uh, those uh, steps, uh, we have decided on the sample size. Uh, decide on the sample size and decide on how to record results decide on apparatus to be used, decide on duration of the investigation, and decide on the method uh, to be used, and decide on the age of the plants to be used. So these are the steps uh, that we have. Then we go to um, different one to identify the independent variable in this investigation. Independent, which means it doesn't uh, depend on any other variable. Uh, so uh, we uh, can uh, check in terms of what we have. Uh, so you see that uh, the independent uh, that we can include there is uh, the plant type. We have got uh, the plant type is not uh, depending uh, on any other variable. Variable. So we have plant type as our as our independent uh, variable. Then we go to three point one point three. Which plant grows better in alkaline soil according to these results? So you see that uh, plant C, uh, is it has uh, a larger uh, length. So that's what we have on that part. 
uh, so we're talking about uh, C. Then we go to the next one. State one factor that the investigator would have kept constant to ensure validity of the results. Uh, so uh, one factor is uh, the same amount of water, same temperature. So those are some of the factors that you can include. So we are saying uh, same amount of water, uh, same temperature, same duration of investigation, same species of plant, same amount of light. So uh, those are the uh, parts that we have. Then on the uh, 3.5, using the data given on the table above, draw a background to show the results of this investigation. So uh, in terms of that, uh, the typical a typical paragraph that you can come up with. So this is a typical paragraph that you can come up yeah. with, uh, whereby we put symbol A, symbol B, symbol C, uh, and a symbol and D. So basically, this is uh, what we have on this part. Moving on to uh, 3.2.1, uh, set one climatic factor from the passing that is effect on uh, on plant growth. So according to the information that are given in the passage, so we have radiation as the correct response. Then uh, on 3.2.2, state one disadvantage of planting on a steep slope measured in the passage. So uh, one disadvantage is that uh, a steep slope is susceptible to rapid surface runoff. So uh, the issue of rapid surface runoff is our correct response from 3.2.3, explain why there are usually more plants on the south facing slope than on the north facing slope. So in response to that mm -hmm. uh, is uh, south facing uh, side receives less solar radiation or sun, uh, will therefore be cooler or loses less water there. There will be less transpiration or evaporation compared to a north facing side. So these are the responses on 3.2.3. So I'm moving on to our next question, and of course, this is in our section C. Uh, it reads, availability of water and sufficient oxygen is a huge impact on biodiversity and ecotourism. Describe the water cycle and oxygen cycle. Also discuss the importance of ecotourism. So in response to that, we are going to look at water cycle, uh, then we'll look at oxygen cycle, then we'll look at the importance of ecotourism. So this is uh, what we have in terms of our water cycle. So these are the points that we have. Uh, that is water evaporates from the oceans under water cycle and then you put water vapor levels plants uh, leaves plants uh, through transpiration we also have oxygen cycle in terms of explanations that we have for uh, oxygen oxygen cycle so oxygen cycle we have our explanation of this part and then we have got our water cycle we have the explanations on uh, this part. Then in terms of uh, the other part where we have to discuss the importance of ecotourism, uh, we have uh, the importances as listed uh, on this part, whereby the first one is uh, people can visit protected areas or relatively unexplored natural areas. Then the uh, second point, without causing any damage or change to the area. Uh, so also if it gives local communities financial benefits or creates jobs for local people. So those are some of the points that we have. And this marks uh, the end uh, of our uh, question paper.